then we're gonna head over to our context since this is where our logic is at the moment. I will gonna close the sidebar and now let's start working with add to cart functionality. And again, remember, this is the icon as we're hovering when we click it here. This is the method that we're running. If you did to set up the same as me, all right. Well, first and foremost, what I would like to do, well, I would like to get two items from the actual state. So I'm going to say, first of all, there will going to be a variable with a name of temp cart. So that's going to be my temporary cart. And I'm going to use a spread operator and get everything that I have currently in the state in the actual cart property. So I'm going to say state cart. So everything that is in a cart, which at the moment, obviously, there's nothing there. But we will going to get all the items. Okay, that would be the first thing. Now, the second thing that I would want is get all the products that I have currently in the state. And for this, I will going to be looking for the store product property. So again, we're going to use the spread operator. We're going to say this dot state state, and we're going to be looking for the store products. First and foremost, we have both of these values. Now, my next idea would be very simple. Since I'm adding item in the cart, I would first want to check whether the item is currently in a cart, which at the moment seems kind of redundant because we don't have it since the cart is empty. However, please understand that later on, we're going to fix up the local storage where obviously there's going to be already something in a cart as well as we're going to be already adding the items in a cart. So we always, always need to just double check whether the item is actually in a cart. So I'm going to say, OK, there will going to be a new item. I'm going to call this variable temp item. And for this, I'm going to use the temp cart, which at the moment will going to hold my array that is coming from the actual state. And I'm going to say temp cart, which obviously is the variable name, use the find method. And remember the difference between the filter and find was that the find will going to get me the single item. The filter would return me the whole array. And then, of course, I can access the zero value since is I'm looking for just one item. But we might as well use the find method because that will going to return me just that one item. And I'm going to say, all right, filter through the temp cart array. And if the item, if each and every item I'm checking, if the item will going to have the ID that matches the ID that we passed here within add to cart, then you will be my item. So I'm going to say, all right, I found my item. Now, like I said, in this case, for sure, we're not going to have it. So I'm going to start, all right. If temp item will be undefined, so if there will be no item in a cart, so let's say temp item, if the item is undefined, then I would like to add some things here. Well, what I would like to add? Well, first and foremost, if we're looking at a finished project, and if you're adding at it, you can see that there is an amount. So I would want to add a property by the name of count, which is going to be counting how many items of this particular product are in the cart. I also would want to add the total because if I'm looking at the cart page, I can see, all right, so this is going to be the quantity of the items that I have in a cart by the same product, as well as I have the total. So if I'm adding, obviously, the amount of items in a cart from the product, I'm increasing the total that's being supplied from this product to the cart. So for that, I'm going to say, all right, first and foremost, if the item is not there, I would want to get that item from the product because obviously if the item is not in a cart, it for sure will going to be in the product because the item is displayed. It's kind of self-explanatory, right? Okay. So we're going to say, okay, so temp item, instead of looking from the cart item, because obviously at the moment I'm saying, okay, there is no item in a cart. So this is undefined. Then this will be equal to temp product. So that was our second array. And now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to be trying to look for the item within the temp product. Now, in this case, for sure, the item is going to be there because, again, the item is actually displayed. So it is has to be in the product. So we're going to say, OK, item ID again, if the ID matches, then now this will going to be my temp product. OK, all right. So let's keep on moving and I'm going to say let total. So this will be the property that I'm going to add right now to this item. So I'm going to say temp item. You will going to have the total property. However, in the very beginning, the total property will going to match what is the price. So if the price is going to be 10, then count obviously will be one in the cart. And then 
obviously, last but not least, the total also will gonna match the price. So I'm gonna say temp item, whatever the item that is coming from the product, you will have a total property, which at the moment we haven't added it yet, but I'm creating a variable for that. And I'm gonna say the total variable at the moment will gonna match whatever you have in a price. So if your price is 20, then the total also is gonna have 20. If the price is, I don't know, 30, then obviously the total will gonna match 30. All right. And then now I would want to structure a new item in the cart. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to say, all right, there will going to be a new variable. I'm going to call this cart item. And again, we will going to do the spread operator because I'm getting this item from the product. But what I would like to do is get a new item in the cart. So I'm going to say, get all the properties from the temp item. That's going to be number one. So I'm getting everything that is in temp item. And by the way, if you don't want the description that also comes with, obviously, you can do a little bit more destructuring and just get rid of it. But in my case, I'm getting all the properties. Then I'm also going to add one more property where I'm going to say the count, since the item is not in the cart at the moment, I'm going to say, all right, I will going to be adding this. And I'm going to say the count property will going to have the value of one. And last, I'm going to add the total property. Like I said, this was the variable. And now I'm just adding this property using the spread to the item that I just created. And now last but not least, I do have my temp cart, right? Which had all the items that I got from the state. Now, of course, again, at the moment, this would be empty, but we can use the spread. 